Oh, hi. <sighs> Welcome. Funny meeting you here. <laughs> the podcast club. TV. It's cocktail hour. At least when we record it is. I don't know when it is when people are listening. It's dry January. Well, you probably need a couple co- cocktails to listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Unless you're doing dry January like yeah. Molly is. Like me. More not power me. to you. Yeah. More power to you. Respect. <laughs> I mean, Respect. not really. I like was wasted the first half. I'm just trying to recover. You know what right. I'm saying? Like it's a balance. It's a balance. You know, you can't win them all. Yeah. You know what I'm right. saying? You, you got to leave some for other people. Aver- right. Averages out to being somewhat dry, drier, right. drier January. Yeah. Well, I guess compared to December, that would right. be. It's just drier, dryish, dryish, dryish January. I was going to do like dry January for real. And then I remember that my best friend was, was coming for a visit. And so like a week before he showed up, I started preemptively drinking <laughs> to prepare myself for his visit. Right. I was like, dry January is over. I have to prepare. You got to put the reps in. Yeah, you got to condition yourself. Yeah. It's going to get ugly if you don't. That's I right. can't tell if I gained weight or if my liver is swollen. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. It's a combination of the two. Good times. Yeah. So what's up, y'all? Well, yeah, what's happening in the world podcast? All kinds of crazy stuff in the news. Joe Rogan's yep. lost his goddamn mind. What else is new? I know. And, well, and everyone whatever. is trying to tell him that. At least he wasn't a prick about it before, although that's kind of his whole shtick. But, oh my gosh, I follow him on Facebook, and he posts maybe like seven times a year. He's posting like seven <laughs> times an hour right now. Oh, like, really? It's totally gone to his head. He's like posting all, like, you know, I'm like, all right, Joe, or like, ah. Uh, so you're on a first name basis with them. Well, of course, man. Me and Joe go it's way Joe. back. You know it's what I'm saying? <laughs> Me and Joey, actually. It's what he prefers Joey to is. call him. Yeah. Whoa. Back in the day. Joey Joey Ledfoot. That's his unofficial nickname. <laughs> Most people don't know that about him. <laughs> Most people don't. <laughs> you heard it here first, people. I don't even know if he does. I don't even know if he knows that. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so are we going to do a three-hour podcast like he does? <laughs> God, I hope him. not. We're, we're, we're on our way to it, I think. <laughs> I'm going to eat some mushrooms. I'll be right back, and then I'll be ready. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. The year starts back. off strong. We're back in the, in the groove. <laughs> yeah, back, back in the groove at all. Paul Stamets would be proud. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there's a lot going on in the news right now. Um, well, Marcus brought this article to our attention, the, uh, the the Bloomberg article. Lots of podcast people talking about it this week. I was in a Twitter space about it. What is it? Fill me in. I'm not in tune with the news. Basically, Bloomberg is like, oh, podcasting hasn't produced a hit in years. Whatever. So, like, what does a hit mean? Yeah, and- does that matter? Well, some of the data is interesting that they provide, but it is total clickbait like Bloomberg typically does. They go mm. with the incendiary title, get everybody all hand wavy about stuff, and mm. so they can sell ads. You know, that's that's what the article basically is about. But some of the points they make are valid, which are are interesting anyway. Now, I don't know how valid they are. That the top 10 podcasts, none of them were released in the last year. And on average, what makes the top top ten most downloads on like Apple Music? Like, is that the gauge right that's now? That's another oh, thing. NPR they don't specify. Shows. Yeah. Mm. So what's they the top ten podcast? Right? Is it streams? Is it downloads? Is it exactly. across platforms across? Exactly. That that is the biggest thing with determining so from, what a hit is. But they're old. Like they're they're like they're they're in the top ten because of reruns. Because people are like because something like uh, what was the one? That's cereal? The, cereal. I don't. Th- I don't think. Yeah, because that one's super old. I right. mean, I guess so. I well, no, cereal is still active. They're still putting out episodes. They haven't so. in a while, but that first season, if people are listening to it now, which they still are, I'm sure. Oh. You know. mm. But that's their point: is that to get to to become a hit in the podcast world, it is a lot harder now. Mostly because the space is a lot more active. There's a lot more podcasts, like millions and millions and millions of more podcasts since when Serial first started, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also the, something that's implied, but I don't think it's explicitly stated, is that there is staying power with these people that started early on, you know? Yeah. And it makes sense like that, that a podcast, even if it's the biggest celebrity on the planet, you know, if Trump started a podcast or something, God forbid, 
um, it would probably be super popular, but it would, it wouldn't, I don't know that it would stay, it would compete with those other ones as far Legacy, as on the, the OG. Yeah. 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 The why OG hasn't, of the new wave. Why hasn't Trump started a podcast? Because that's what that face was about. I was like, what is he doing <laughs> actually? He should totally start a podcast. Have you heard him talk? <laughs> Oh, well, people sure. love to hear him talk. <laughs> I was like, murr, he murr. loves to hear him talk. That's another topic. His people that's probably won't day. let him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably it. Or he doesn't have anyone thinking about it. On right. the way, they're right. all wrong. Um, He's starting a social media platform instead. <laughs> right. But anyway. that's an interesting. Interesting, because there's some great shit out there in podcast world, and it it goes back to we talked about you know how to cut through and how to like how does how does something get popular right like every like and what is popular i guess is like the other thing like that we've talked about that too like what's the what's the benchmark how do you aggregate all the data across like all the all the different ways including watching on your own site or anywhere else like there's a lot of ways to consume this content yeah because it's different than some other things if you wa- if you pay attention to iHeartRadio, all of their podcasts are in the top are the best <laughs> yeah like out of the top <laughs> 10 right. six of them are iheart but you know right so well, yeah it's then, like whoever's participating in the tracking and mm-hmm. like what makes it the best like what if there's a podcast that has less listeners than how we built this but has you know, a hundred thousand paid subscribers, yeah. right? Like, does that make it better or yeah. is it only based on downloads? And then are we accounting for like the bogus downloads and the double downloads and the Facebook downloads and all this, like how many times in the last year have, have companies come out and been Individual like, whoops, sorry about right, that. Across two platforms, you do it on Spotify and you do it on Apple podcasts. Like what's what? That's YouTube. a great point, Molly, about the ad stuff. I don't think I heard every, anybody mention that in the ad Twitter revenue. space. Yeah. Right. Because that, to me, the, the monetary influx from it would, would be a huge indicator of success, but, too. But, you know, on the flip, it's like not every podcast monetizes that way. Right. Facts. And so it, it, it comes a lot of different ways. Well, right. So like branded it's podcasts, super, right? Super it's not right. about plays. And you could get a... $10 million geospatial satellite mapping contract, you know what I mean? Because of that podcast and maybe it got 50 downloads. So yeah. right, how does that get, uh, you know, how does that get thrown in the hat? You know what I mean? It, what it doesn't. makes a good podcast? It's yeah. Like, or the one that was good, what makes a top, a top 10 a top podcast? 10 podcast. Yeah. What is the top 10? And these goons are just talking about the, the publicly available lists you know the the top t- top lists or whatever and the charts and the charts don't matter it's like measuring just downloads like and it's you like were what's the chart you're right what's the chart it's what's apple there's one? google there's spotify they're all separate yeah right right hmm. so in other news part of my um 2022 prediction is already started getting to come true so there's that what? the what crazy that? one the what? crazy one what was the crazy one that Remind spotify us. is going to go out of business and tank the podcasting oh. industry <laughs> <laughs> it's is that what's happening? What well, happened? I, podcast I closed their only original content oh. podcast studio and fired 12 people last week. Yes. So they spent like, I don't know, a good <laughs> trillion dollars. I just made that number up. It's a trillion in case you want to spell that. G-A-T-R-I-L-L-I-O-N. A good trillion dollars buying other podcast companies, but they have a 12-person actual physical podcast studio that wasn't able to crank <laughs> out anything relevant enough or revenue generating enough to sustain the salary of 12 people. So I would wow. say that I might be on track to being correct with my crazy prediction. <laughs> I wonder why though. I wonder, I want the, does that have to do with pop have to do with Spotify or does it have to do with just the studio? Like did Spotify squander the studio's capabilities because they wanted certain things or did this was the studio just not, as capable mm. as they made themselves out to be when purchased. Well, there's a tell all waiting to happen. Yeah. The book is coming. Mm-hmm. And was it Ashley at, at uh, hot pod that report on that? I can't remember who wrote about it, but I don't even know. Yeah. But yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten about that. The, the, what I read, whoever wrote about it, which we'll put, try to find a link, put in the show notes. They did have good shows. None of them were hits. 
but you know they they were well regarded shows that are now being produced by some of the other teams that they purchased they just kind of got shuffled off but i remember mm-hmm. some insiders that got let go saying that they were kind of like the bastard stepchild that didn't ever get any attention or props or funding or anything like that. So they were making good content, but they Spotify wasn't giving them the time of day because they cared more about Gimlet, about Wondery, about all these other places that they bought. Hmm. Which is just, I don't think that's a good indication. You know what I mean? You can't, you know, you can't even employ 12 people. I mean, (sighs) yeah, it's, it's not a good look no matter how you slice it. Hmm. Unless you made a crazy prediction for 2022 and it's coming true <laughs> three weeks in, and then you're then and it's you're on and you're sitting then, pretty. Then I should go gamble. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> That's right. Do they have casinos down there in Costa Rica? I don't know. Probably. Hmm. Molly will find one. Yeah. If not, did there's somebody's basement. Or she'll start one on the yeah, street. Shh, Off topic, did, did you guys get hit with any tsunamis from the big volcano? No, but the waves were a little bit weird. Okay. I went out there and I looked straight into the ocean and I said, take me first. And and just didn't work out. So here I tsunami. Am. I'm glad it didn't work out, Molly. I know. I said, yeah, pick me. Clear. Pick <laughs> me. Pick me. But no. And then, of course, Netflix, like uh, the algorithm, like suggested that I watch the movie The Impossible about the 2004 tsunami in uh, Thailand. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, Netflix, thanks for stoking my fears accurately. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Kind of crazy. They listen in on your devices. It's not just Zuckerberg people. Yeah, everybody. You know, going going back going back to the first the first topic about like the top ten and cutting through and all that sort of stuff. It goes back to what we were going to talk about last time at the end before we went down the rabbit hole. I'm just going to go right down. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. If you have a decentralized, yeah, right, right. Wait, wait. Before we go, (laughs) I got to get prepared. Water. (laughs) Get hydrated. All right. All right. So podcasting and Molly, like you're like huge about this, like podcasting has been very much about there not being a gatekeeper and it can, you can do it on your own. You can do your own thing and that's, and you totally still can, but they're all often these different, how do you find these? Like it's all, it's, it's not, it's decentralized in a way because anyone can do their own thing, but it's not really decentralized because there's still nothing like unifying all of them, except the fact that they're a podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. So what if there was a way to do a decentralized podcast platform where I I know because I was I was watching it about a decentralized like music licensing mm-hmm. platform. Okay. And every all these users can and, and it's interesting because in, in the end I think there's still an element of like gatekeeping because like someone's got to curate or determine what's garbage from quality and Mm -hmm. i guess like it's like who determines garbage versus quality but like if you're flooded with a ton of things that are like don't even pat okay i'm getting ahead of myself everybody could submit their own content users and like right now you pay spotify to be used for data farming basically like i listen to these sort of things and then marcus is also interested in things that are similar so they're going to take my information that i listen to these things and give it to Marcus and Marcus is going to be like, Oh shit, I like this because it's similar to what I listen to. Mm-hmm. I pay Spotify to enable them to use my information to do that. Right. I benefit because I get like to listen to cool music, but like I'm paying them. What if the ecosystem rewarded me for curating a list that Marcus likes to listen to? Mm. Um, and so there's kind of like this like tokenization and this kind of decentralized nature that like, there's no one central entity that is, hosting and harvesting this data, but the data exists amongst the many and the many determine what's popular. And it's always like voting. And if you are a part of the community, you're, you're contributing to the community, you are curating lists, you're um, uploading podcasts, you're doing these things, then you get more voting rights. You get more say in what happens within the ecosystem so that everybody that's contributing to it is a part of it instead of it being like, Hey, Spotify, here's my thing. Like, can you make my podcast like on the top list of like, whatever, like there's still a grind to be played with spot with Spotify, right? Like you, it's like, it's like, it's like record labels before, right? Like how do you get your thing to be like in the top list? Like there's definitely a game to be played in the way that it exists right now. 
what if there wasn't a Spotify to go preach to, but the community that exists within that supports the endeavor ultimately votes on what rises to the top. And there's elements to that, like don't that, that like fall through the cracks, but that's one way of kind of doing like decentralized community-based podcasting discuss. And so that that's the interesting part of NFTs, not just using them to collect digital assets, but it's that decentralization and the monetization aspect and the utility of it, right? Yeah. Like it earns you a, vo- a, a vote at the table. Like it's right. a, it's you, you have this piece, this, this, this virtual document that says that you are part of, uh, you know, your one vote in this growing community and you can cash your chips in to say this happens or whatever that, that may be. How um, do you see NFTs, Molly? I don't. This shit confuses the hell out of me. Man. Yeah, same here. Adam scam. is the expert. <laughs> I go deeper and deeper down this rabbit hole every day. But and I don't know. I don't know all of it. But I know that like that idea of it being kind of commu- like community is very central to a lot of this stuff. That it has to do with the community that is building any one of these NFTs, tokens, coins whatever whatever it is it has to be and a lot of them like going like discord or whatever but the community's got to be solid and the community's got to be invested in what it's trying to do and it's about the community and so by contributing to any one of these whether whether it's like ethereum or podcoin or whatever the hell you want to whatever it is there's a podcoin I, I'm just making that up right now. You need to start it right now. Podcoin, yeah. Podcoin. Well, you heard it here first, people. Podcoin, uh, January 18th, 2022, 726 Eastern Time. Podcoin. We Podcoin. called trademarks. That's how that works, right? So that's how it works. It's recorded into the ledger of Podcoin. This is the first <laughs> Podcoin transaction. Podcoin. Um, you know, there's the community's got to be strong to make any one of these things like relevant. Like that's kind of how a lot of it happens. That's why these things blow up. Not because they're just not just not just because, but because there's a momentum behind it, and it takes many people to make there be momentum. Um, it's kind of like taking Spotify and flipping it the other way that all the users benefit and uh, have a say in what becomes popular on Spotify, not because Spotify said so and jams it down your throat, but it's the reverse. It's that the use it's totally user generated and user curated. And so it's a lot like um, Reddit's upvote stuff in in a way, but a lot more complicated. It could, it could could be like that. I bet there's still, and like, look, there, there still has, this is where like, I don't know that there's fully uh, an answer or solution yet because there's still got to be a level of moderation. You still want someone that's, that's still kind of maintaining it so that like a bunch of bots don't just come in and say, Oh, this, really racist, terrible podcast is going to end up being number one because all these other bots started contributing and right. earning these tokens that earn them votes that then say that one's the best. So like there's uh, there's definite holes in the implementation, but I think at least right now with my limited knowledge of like what that could look like, that's one way. That's one way, but I think it it, it could end up being kind of like what, what I know Molly's in our conversations, like that's always what, like what fired me up about was what you fired up about was like, you can just make a podcast and put it out there into the ether and do something really cool with it. Agnostic of any of these other platforms. Like you can just do a cool thing, you know, and there's no, you're, you're the master of your own domain. You can do gatekeepers, right? You can do, you can do what you want to do with it. Um, but you know, then it comes back to like top ten and like what's the best and how do you gauge this and like what's that mean? The discoverability so aspect. There's there's still an element of you wanting to kind of be a part of something, but and those some things that exist right now aren't quite um they're not quite solving the problem just yet. They're still gatekeepers in a way. And that that's where I see people calling bullshit is that there is no truly decentralized platform because you all got to go somewhere to vote on stuff or to, you know, cash in your money or whatever, you know, sign up for the thing or whatever. You have to 
use a website, you have to use some kind of platform. So it's it can never be truly decentralized, right? Well, it's decentralized in that it's not Spotify. We keep saying Spotify, but it's not company X that <laughs> is hosting. Yeah. Right. It's not it's not company X that is hosting the ledger and determining what is a valid contribution. Right. It's not the staff. It is, it's the curating. many. It's yeah. all the it's all the people that support the ecosystem because the ecosystem exists not in one server bank in my bedroom, but in a thousand server banks across different places. And we're all sharing the ledger that dictates that this thing happens. So it's like a human algorithm. So that's kind of where a lot of it goes. And this is kind of getting really far away from podcasting, but like the buzzword now is, is uh, DAO, D-A-O, Centralized <laughs> Autonomous Another Organization. Another word Marcus is going to hate. You got the DAO, you got the DAO. You got the DAO. You got the DAO now. You got DAOs. So DAO is like, it's like basically like coding in what like an or, like organizational rules that dictate how something's going to happen. Smart contract, same kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, I'm not as familiar. That's like the new thing that a lot of things are happening with, but it's like everybody throws money into like a thing and then it buys it. It Okay. I'm just brainstorming now. I'm just talking that this might need to be deleted from the whole podcast. <laughs> um, but like the everybody contributing to this could become a potential owner right uh, they're they're an owner of the ecosystem they they are contributing to it and any ad spend any ad revenue that gets generated by any podcast in the system is paid back to the owners which is everyone mm. and so in that and that's where like a dao comes in where like there's a maybe the whole platform collects ad revenue um, and distribute it amongst its top best. That sounds like platforms. communism, dude. But no, but like, we, but like, we contributed <laughs> to it. Like, we, I mean, you know, you're not kind of wrong. Um, but like, that's because capitalism is working so well for us right now. But that's, <laughs> you know, a, a bucket of a bucket of ad revenue comes in, and the DAO, the smart contract, says, okay, once we've hit this capacity of, like, some of the money has to be used to. to to pay the people that support the system that have, that are using their computers to support the system because it still requires computing power. But any any balance left over at the end of every month gets distributed out to each individual person that owns a token that's contributed to the ecosystem because we curated or we voted or we did anything else that enhanced the potential for the system to improve. Molly, you had some some more faces going on there. It reminds me of this show I was watching on Netflix, I think, where they were living in the future and it was all like a simulation and they had like skins and they got like a new skin. Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon. Yes. That's a great show. I, I heard that's a good show. I feel like the metaverse is Altered Carbon, except Altered Carbon was like really violent and really crazy. Yeah. But. It is. Feels exactly the same to me. It is. Yeah. It's like a, like a, not even utopian because it becomes dystopian because these people take advantage just like with capitalism, just like communism, all of it sounds good on paper, but as soon as somebody figures out how to gain the system, we all lose again. (laughs) I like that you just said communism sounds good on paper, but I'm just saying (laughs) as you were, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think, you know, at the core, right? Like Part of me is like, okay, I, I, I feel like an old person because I'm like, I don't know what that shit is. I'll be in the jungle if you need me, right? <clears throat> I'm like, I'm just going to stay in Costa Rica and like, y'all can do whatever you're going to do and then I'll just die. Everything will be fine. But part of this just feels like escapism, you know, or like it's like Bezos going to the moon. It's like, are we just creating another digital planet for us to fuck up eventually? I don't know. Yep. It all feels very... Weird, and I'm not like anti tech or anti like future first by any means. I just you're skeptical. I just don't. I just don't understand. You know, and I saw some article the other day about somebody was like selling knockoffs of NFTs, and the artist was like, "Please 
This is yeah. my work. I just saw it They're for sale. They're stealing people's work. Yeah. Which is like, well, dude, it's kind of easy. All you got to do is right click on that Mickey <laughs> Flicky and it's yours. So, I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's a whole but, other rabbit hole. I mean, it's all very interesting. I mean, isn't, you know, at its core, isn't the community judging what's good and what's bad and moving it to the top? That's essentially what's supposed to be happening, but it's what's not. The gatekeepers are Spotify and iHeartRadio, and they're all getting paid by the record labels to play that music. So yep, right. we're all being force fed like the, uh, what was it, like the Island Boy and all that, right? Like, it's not yeah. real, right? It's and, and podcasting is not at the level that music industry is where the corporations are completely manipulating all the lists everywhere, but it's right. getting more and more like that every day because... Spotify is buying up everybody. You know, you have all these big studios, all this money is invested. So of course they're going to push hard for their own content over the indie creators. And, you know, so yeah, get Molly, you're totally right. It's, it's, it, it, I I don't see, like, I see some interesting things developing, but I don't know how it's going to pan out in the long term. you know? I mean, what would be cool is if you could go into the metaverse and be like, I'm going to go to Joe Rogan's studio today. And you're like, burr, 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 and you're a little cartoon guy. And you walk over and you're like, Joe, suck it. What's up, motherfucker? And you sit down and you talk shit. Heckle him in his own podcast. That would now, be awesome. Now, if I could do that in the metaverse. You'd be there all day. Oh, all day. I'll be throwing oh, fake popcorn. That would be your new job. I would just visit various people's metaverses and heckle them. It, it could be amazing, but. I don't know. We were kind of talking a little bit, something about this too. Like, um, so I was working with this guy, uh, Ben, and I can't remember the name of his company right now, which is terrible, but, uh, he has like one of those Oculus Rift things in his, in mm -hmm. his, you know, and, and he does, uh, oh, his company's called Meta something, which is crazy too. He was like, <laughs> Hey, what's up? But they have these like crazy, like 360 cameras. I think we talked about this before with sound and everything. So I was like, yes. man, how crazy would it be if you could like go in with this headset and like enter a space and you could be in like, you know, rare essence, you know, concert on the stage and the drums are louder over here and the vocals totally. are louder. Right. And like, so like when I think about the metaverse and like the application like that, I'm like, Oh, that could be a, a cool way of interacting and all that. But this, the rest of it, I don't know. It just feels like escapism and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, we're killing, you know, we're killing the air we breathe. We're killing the planet. It's like essentially not safe to leave your house between like mass shootings and COVID. You might as well just keep your ass at home or mm. move to Costa Rica. <laughs> not that we don't have COVID. We got plenty of that going around. But <laughs> at some point, is everybody just going to be in their living room, like on their like recliner like shitter? Like I think and, about like, it a lot. Yeah. That's know? like Wally, like You've the movie Wally. Wally. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wally, Molly. He's like Wally in Idiocracy. Remember, he's like sitting on yes. the recliner and it's a toilet. <laughs> and, and he, you know, like the only thing missing is the goggles. I just. Like how far, you know, are we from that? Yep, not far. Well, that's taken like a that's that's way deeper down the rabbit hole I know. than I can go and still stay relevant to podcasting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well, so how do we put a bow on the NFT discussion? Because to um, me, it is like the one last thing I'd like to say about it is, and I think Molly, you hinted at this that it does sound way too complicated for regular people. Like if I, even the value for value stuff that's going on right now, where you can buy a Satechi and give it to somebody for listening to their podcast and like uh, James Cridland and, and Evo Terra and those guys are doing it. But um, I, it's too complicated for me to set up. Like, I, I want to. I, I already have a Venmo. I already have like you know, We're, all these credit cards says and stuff. The I'm guy with like it's ten thousand dollars worth of equipment behind him. Just saying, <laughs> like it's too complicated. It's too much. <laughs> but it is. It is. Yeah. It totally is super complicated. It took me, and I feel super old. I try. I bought an NFT, and it took me an exorbitant amount of time. Right. And I did it all wrong. Um. <laughs> And I learned a lot from doing that. And the answer is 100%. It's way too early. This is like coding your, this is like pre MySpace, like coding your first website in HTML and putting a pretty cat on a website. Right. Call it, and with music playing in the background and you thought you were a coder. Like, look where we are now. You know what I mean? Like, that didn't exist 
uh, 20 years ago or whatever, the, whatever the hell, 30 years ago, whatever yeah. the hell it was. So like it's, we're in gen one of this thing happening and half this shit is going to go completely zero nowhere and half the shit might exist for a little bit longer, but like you don't code on HTML anymore, dude. And that was like the jam, you know what I mean? So like even what we think of as being like pretty prolific and stuff right now may not exist anymore. I think it's interesting, the idea, and it still has, I'm, I'm not saying that anything that I've said in the, the last 15 minutes or whatever makes any sense at all. I think there's still limitations to like the whole, the whole idea that you can be truly decentralized, right? That right. you can be truly agnostic of any singular entity or group of people being moderators or curators or anything that puts someone to the, to the cool kid list, to the top 10. Right. Um, but it is a, it's a different way of of spinning the organization of it up, and there could be a cool way to deliver that sort of experience and to ultimately go. Okay, Molly, go. Okay, do it. Okay, what if tear it to what pieces? If the podcast NFT was like I'm thinking about like that Martin Screlly guy who bought like the only Wu Tang album Farmer and then bro, the government yep. took mm-hmm. it and then they just auctioned oh, it or whatever. Love Farmer Bro. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> it's am- the greatest story ever. It's amazing, right? So, but what if what if podcast NFTs were like that? Like, what if Redman, Method Man, and Rick Ross did a podcast, but like it wasn't available anywhere, and you could buy the NFT of that podcast, and then you okay. were the only person that could hear those things. But in that scenario, only super famous rich people would be able to make any right. money doing that because, like, you know, as we've proven week in and week out, you can't just get people to listen to your shit. Yep. Okay flip it you're not you're right and you're you're right you're very right right something like that where it's like wu-tang and it's like limited like only the most it's still a money game right at that point it totally is you're doing it for the money only however however it, it there's a lot of ways to do that so like what you can do you're very right about that as an artist as a musical artist as an audio artist um it's the same it it's a little bit different than the graphical artist because the musical artist, you can say you're all, all those people that buy this NFT that is this audio recording, you're the only people that you all own this and any revenue that comes from the streams of this. And that that's existing in like current uh, framework. framework of like how those people get paid. You can now benefit from owning this piece of this content or you're the exclusive listener and you can decide and the ecosystem, the 10 of you or the 20 of you or the hundred of you that own one of these can decide we're going to all vote and we're going to say, we're going to place this here or we're going to keep it to ourselves and we're going to keep it really cool for forever. So like there's totally ways to, to, to do that in a way that could be very, I'm not an artist nor am I creative enough to think of a way that makes that really fucking rad. But the potential exists that you could totally control that release and that that you had an interview with like the sickest someone that never does anything ever and you have the moment captured. I don't know. But see I don't know. Molly, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so twisted around it. right now, Molly. I can't even I can't even I can't even handle it. I but as it. a creator, to me, I create things as a way to connect with other human beings. And if I'm creating something purely out of and and there's nothing wrong with creating something purely out of the desire to profit from it but if i'm going to create this exclusive thing that only a small group of people get to hear just for the sake of making money the i like it goes against to me what podcasting is all about it, it's like broadcasting so more people can hear it you know that's that's why podcast was created in the first place and that was just one way of spinning it that was just yeah. one implementation right yeah. like it could be a bunch of different things and it doesn't need to be that it could be that everybody like the originator like the the thing about the mm-hmm. nft is like you've created a digital product which i think is important to like the nft working you create a digital product yeah that the exchange of this digital product or the activities of the digital product are trackable and the 
there is verifiable because it's a community of people that verify that this exists, that this relationship exists, that you own this thing that, that equates to, uh, that can ultimately end up in delivering value to the holders and the original content creator. That's so this sounds like like music licensing essentially. But it is, it is, it it totally is. There's just no BMI or ASCAP or whatever. It totally is. Exactly. That's exactly it. There's, you're hundred percent right that you, Marcus, if you make, if you created a podcast, you could write, and you wanted to release it as an NFT or whatever, you could write that the monetary exchanges of that after the initial minting of it, the initial like creation of it, you get a cut of every single transaction that happens as a result of it. Forever and always. You always get 10%, no matter what. You get 10% of it. Someone sells it for $1,000, you get 100 bucks. Someone sells it for $2,000, you get 200 bucks. Someone sells it for 50 bucks, you get five bucks. doesn't matter if it goes up or down, you're always getting a cut of it. Gotcha. Um, and you can build that in. And the, the ecosystem delivers that. Um, and nobody can change it because it's built into the ecosystem. Because it's built into the token. It's built Unless into the, the power the, goes out. <laughs> the world's pa- but the the world we get hit, hit, hit by an asteroid on all kinds right <laughs> or a tsunami <laughs> or a tsunami <laughs> or a volcano or anything else or aliens yeah well if I had a podcast of me and Tupac talking I bet you I could NFT the shit out of it the shit out of it <laughs> would I have to I think, I think I'd have to figure out a way could, to get some techies or whatever only if you could Bitcoin. NFT your experience with Mike Tyson that time <laughs> when you were like rolling around DC. I don't, I don't remember all the details. I just remember <laughs> that neither. Mike Tyson and shrooms were a part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you could classic. NFT that experience for classic, classic Molly, if you could NFT that <laughs> rolling in it, yeah, everyone wants to ride that and sidebar total sidebar, but related to the two things that I just mentioned, Mike Tyson was recently on podcast. Uh, and I think it's like, I'm not saying that he's the greatest person in the world, but Logan Paul makes the impulsive podcast, which is like number one rated by, I don't know. Um, but he <laughs> had cares? Mike Tyson on there. He had Mike Tyson on this podcast and Mike Tyson is a shroom hound. Oh yeah. And Mike, Mike Tyson took a fistful of shrooms like this on the show. To start, and, Whoa. Well, wait till you guys just see what him. happens next week. You know what I mean? <laughs> just <laughs> ate him and just starts chewing him. Like it's his job. Like ate just him like, into the mic. Ah. Oh, and no. Just stop. Gets <laughs> towned and it's wild. I am going to watch that immediately. <laughs> you, as soon as this Molly, is over. <laughs> need to watch. And it's on a podcast. So it's relevant. It's, 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 it relates to our discussion it's here. It's research. It's research. It's market research. <laughs> Man. I have a pretty good George Clinton mushroom story too, but save it. Save it for the next time. Because we got to talk about Yeah. So let's let's bring it back to the real world. Marcus, we've we've gone we've gone around the horn here. Marcus. <laughs> what's up? This is I'm backwards. Ground control You're backwards to today. Major Tom. I my my wife has moved out of oh. our office. Not, not out of the house. <laughs> I almost got really grim for a second. We're like, what? I was like, mm. don't know how we're supposed to respond no. to that. <laughs> that was awesome. She moved out of the office. So now I have a dedicated <laughs> podcast studio space that's 20 foot by 20 foot above my garage. Jen has taken over our dining room, which is going completely unused. I'm building her tomorrow some barn doors that are sound panels on the back side. Brilliant. Yes. And I'm going to document it. I'll do video about the whole process. I already recorded what it sounds like with nothing in the room. I recorded what it sounds like with only the rug down. And mm. I still need to record what it sounds like just with the furniture. And then I'm going to do it with the bookshelves and the acoustic treatment stuff. So that's going to be a whole thing. But I pivoted. I used to be facing that way over by that window. So now I'm in the middle of the room, like a proper studio. I'm three feet off the wall and I've got still got my cool bookshelf over there with all my microphones. I had to shuffle some things around because more of it's visible now. So So you moved, I was wondering, you you didn't move the camera to the other side of the desk. I did move the camera to the other side of the desk. 
And you move the desk. And I move the desk. So I'm having to get used to facing my left instead of my right. And it's and it's this is the first endeavor. I like today I spent way too long getting everything dialed in. But I'm loving the new lighting. I'm loving how far back the wall away. It looks like a cooler backdrop. I got a an accent light lighting up the wall back there, which is just kind of adding texture, which I know you guys can't see because it Riverside is chopping me off. But um yeah, we need, more, we need more cool lights in there. And then I also, oh, I also got uh, every time it never, it never <laughs> ceases to amaze me. So every time I've got this set up over here. If if you make me full screen, Adam, you'll be able to see. But this is a gear tree for a client that that I had them send it to me. It's by Ulanzi. It was like eight hundred bucks for this mounting system, but it has the camera and the light, and it's like this really nice metal um thing but i've got her camera which is a so the sony zve 10 which we talked about last week molly i don't know if it's on the show or not but um with the sigma lens and it looks awesome it looks really really good and i'm even that backlit good. i mean i'm not facing my microphone but are you doing all this video stuff in the atem yes the switching yes with the picture in picture with the little circle and all that oh so yeah uh, I didn't That's mean to, I didn't mean to do that, but yeah, it's awesome. So yeah, um, shit, we all need to do better. But yeah, this Speak arm. Speak for this, yourself, man. I got a brand <laughs> new light. I'm killing it over yes, here. Yes, Molly's light is doing, awesome. I ain't doing shit. I was gonna you have her get that light. Mo that Molly. Molly has the new Loom Cube. What is oh, it called? You? Key light? Is that what it's? No, the key light is the uh, Elgato one, which is pretty much the same. I don't know Loom what it's Cube. called. Yeah. Loom it's, an, Cube. it's a nice little light. It's got it's different circle, settings. And it has it, a really cool built-in arm. It's, it's yeah. got a cool built-in arm so you can... Oh, shit. Uh oh, Can't take me it. anywhere. Well, you can... <laughs> now you see what it's like without the light. Yeah, without the light. But it looks great. Now I feel like I should be telling my, my sad story. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Siri, turn off my video light. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hold on, she's taking them. She didn't do it. Yeah, well, I have I have see, seen sets, so when I, I can't say it because it'll shut everything down and my camera will turn off. But do I it. say no. <laughs> what could it be? Abracadabra. It's a great. It's a great end of the podcast. Do it. <laughs> Upper nickel. Okay, do it. End it. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Three, two, one. Do it. This is hey everyone. It's been a pleasure. The podcast club. Thanks a lot. Listen, subscribe. Great, Marcus. Do it. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hey Siri, I'm done broadcasting. Done broadcasting. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, shut my camera off, but the audio is still there. <laughs> that was awesome. This podcast was produced by HeartCast Media.